This damselfly nymph is from the Basic Manual of Fly Tying by Paul Fling and Donald Puterba. I'm tying it on a number 10 2x long hook. I'm using olive thread. You could use brown or tan. Black. Started the thread halfway down the shank uh, and then I'm going to tie in the tail. The tail is white marabou. In order to control the marabou, I'm going to wet it. The tail is not very long, uh, not even a half a hook shank. So I'll go ahead and get that started, and then I'm going to clip off all that extra out on the other side, in the front of the hook, so that it's not in my way. But I want that tail material to come all the way up to where the thorax and the abdomen are going to be divided because I want the body on this fly to be very smooth. So bring my tail tie-in back to above where the barb would have been. And then bring my thread back up to my tie-in point. I'm going to weight this fly so I have a piece of weighted wire. And I'll wrap that in, but it's only going to be wrapped on the thorax. The idea of putting weight only on the thorax of this nymph is so that it will nosedive in the water when the tension on the fly line is released. And I guess that makes it look more realistic. So just up in the thorax and then I'm going to wrap up over that weighted wire. Wrap back over it to tie it in. And then Fling and Pewter Boss suggest a little bit of head cement. Got my diluted goop. Put a drop of that on the wire. That'll help hold it in. The rib on this nymph is fine copper wire. I'm using some 0.2 millimeter wire. And again, I want to try to make sure that I'm not creating any lumps or unevenness in the abdomen. So I'll wrap that all the way back to the tail. Wrap it back up to the thorax place. The instructions call for dubbing and I don't have any super fine dubbing. The dubbing I have has got a lot of guard hair in it and it's pretty buggy so instead of dubbing I'm going to use some Antron. Antron yarn and tie that in up here again where the thorax will connect to the abdomen. Wrap smoothly along that Antron way back to the tail. Take my thread back up to my thorax and then wrap the Antron and create a nice smooth even body it can taper a little bit as I come up, but it doesn't really need to. What I'm really working for is that smooth, even body. And then I can catch that in. I like three wraps over and three wraps under. I don't know why. Just do. Seems to be plenty. There's four to tie that in because it was off center. And then cut off the extra antron. Then I'll take that 
wire and spiral wrap a rib and try to keep my spirals nice and even. I'm sure the fish don't care, but the fly is prettier if those spirals are evenly wrapped. And maybe someday I'll get ambitious enough to really, really be careful with it and enter a fly into a contest. Although I don't have that as an objective right now. And catch that wire in and then a few back and forth wiggles. We'll break it off. I'm using raffia or Swiss straw for the wing casing and this is actually off-white that I have colored with a permanent marker and I guess the cool thing about markers is that you can make your wing casing pretty much any color you want to. Tie that in and make sure that it doesn't cover the eye. And then this fly has its own eyes. So I have two beads from a bead chain. And I'm going to wrap over those a few times. Get them to set on top of the shank. And then make sure that I've got plenty room between those and the hook eye. So that I don't have trouble when I tie in the legs and wrap the head. So I'm X-wrapping, it's like two or three wraps from one direction and two or three wraps from the other direction. Try to get those eyes to be even. And then under overs, so I'm going under the bead and over the hook shank. Under the bead and over the hook shank. And do that a few times to lock those eyes in. And then bring my thread behind back to where the raffia is tied in and where I will dub in the thorax. I'm going to put a dab of head cement on that X-wrap, lock it in, and then for the body I'm using dark olive dubbing. could use, again, other colors here and reminding myself that what I really need to do is go out into nature and observe what the real colors in nature are. That's probably enough, maybe. It calls for a, a you know, pretty substantial thorax. Let's kind of judge what I want to get behind that eye. Then I'll bring my thread up in front of the bead eyes. Bring the raffia up over the top. And then probably need to pinch wrap that in. Try to keep that raffia from rolling over on itself. And then cinch down on that. A few over the top wraps. Pull back on it, a few under wraps. And then I can clip out the extra. Now this fly does have legs, so I'm going to invert the hook so I can tie the legs in on the bottom. The instructions say eight to 10 soft tackle fibers. I'm going to use this brown partridge feather. I have v-notched one of those feathers so that I have, I don't know, I might have 10. I didn't really count. I just kind of looked. Squeeze those tips and then 
loose a couple of loose wraps over the stem get that stem centered and then I'm going to pull up on the stem making sure I don't pull the thread off the hook and pull back until I have the legs about the size I want them or, or the size I want them and then I can cinch down and wrap hard on that stem pull up on the stem and wrap underneath of it and I'm having trouble keeping that thread on the shank with that down eyed hook this is why it's important to make sure that I have plenty of room between the eyes the bead eyes and the eye of the hook and then clip off the stem turn my hook back right side up finish wrapping ahead and then would we'll finish it so two important things with this fly one is to keep the bod that abdomen nice and even and then to make sure that the eye the hook eye is not crowded to tie in the legs and head so a couple of whip finishes whip finishing knots and then I'm going to put some head cement also on that head this is a diluted goop and I have a damsel fly nymph from the basic manual of fly tying by Paul Fling and Donald Pewterbaugh.